Hey guys, it's your boy Donnie Spellbreaker with another uh, Donnie's Take. And uh, today we're going to do part two of Manifestation. Uh, specifically, we're going to call it Visualization. Right? So in part one, if uh, you haven't seen it, please uh, click the link down below. Uh, Manifestation 101. We're going to uh, give you the basics. Right? So that would be a prerequisite for watching this video. And what did we learn in the last video? We learned that thoughts create reality, that we are in some type of dreamlike situation, some simulation type reality, um, that I believe personally that we are uh, been created from God and God dwells within us and that we have the ability to bring our conscious thoughts um, and bring them into reality that we find ourselves. Now, I do not believe that we are gods. I do not believe that we can become gods. Um, I do believe there are limitations on manifestation and the people who believe that they aren't and that, that believe that they are gods are some of the weirdest, most ungrounded, uh, bizarre people I've ever met. And I really don't want to go down that route. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, I'll leave it there. Okay. We've all, we've all been there. Okay, um, but I would be lying if I said that I haven't observed thousands of times that my dominant conscious state um, creates reality. And so that's why I thought it would be really important and very helpful to do this series on manifestation. And uh, because it's been so important to me and that I've seen that it works has opened up so many questions on who I am. What is my power? What is my relationship with the world I find myself in and God? And uh, what can I do about it? <laughs> right? And this is a journey I'm still on. Um, but I have done it enough to uh, want to bring it to others. And as well, I really want you guys to teach me. So in the comments, I want to hear your guys' experiences with manifestation. What you do, why you think it works, you know, how to do it. And let's, uh, let's do this together. Okay. Um, so... Without further ado, at the end of episode one, we left with the next step. So we, what have we done? Okay, we have started healing our traumas. We have started um, practicing daily. We have done either, you know, uh, we have developed our own spiritual daily practice, right? And we've, we're practicing gratitude, right? We're, we're, we're becoming more aware of our dominant thoughts and what's happening in our lives, right? We're actually journaling that every day for a month. We're saying, hey, my mood was mostly this. And then these are the things that happened to me. And we're looking back and we're starting to see that there is a correlation between our dominant mental thoughts and reality, okay? And we also now know that literally... We cannot achieve anything that we don't see ourselves um, as, okay? Whether that is a, you know, successful filmmaker or being in a house or having a lovely spouse or being able to travel the world or having a dream job or having, you know, a dream body, okay? We literally cannot achieve anything that we don't, we cannot imagine ourselves in and we cannot re repeatedly imagine ourselves in that position and on top of it that we do not believe we are worth and that is why again we have to heal our traumas because if we don't think we're worth wealth if we don't think we're worth a, a healthy spouse we will sabotage it and it will never ever ever happen and we see many people trapped in doom loops whether it be abusive relationships abusive jobs perpetual debt all of these things it's because they literally do not believe that they're worth more okay and nobody in the sad thing is that nobody else can tell you that you're worth more okay all right when i had trauma that i didn't heal okay i uh no matter how many people said i was amazing it didn't percolate in all right um that's just the way it is unfortunately so nobody can do that work for you that's just the way it is. And our whole modern economy okay, is uh, set up to uh, convince you that they can help you and give you that. But they can't. That's only the gift that you can give yourself. And I believe you can only get there with the help of God. God is your understanding. And diligence. And believing and having faith that you are worth more. 
Okay, so faith is a huge part of, I believe, manifestation, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so these are the basics here. Now, I want to talk about visualization. Okay, so manifestation works through uh, focused and proper visualization. So what does that mean? That means fundamentally, when we're talking visualization, we're talking in our third eye here, in our mind's eye, we're being able to see a reality, okay? Whether that be me swimming in a pool full of money, or swimming in a pool full of honeys, or swimming in uh, a pool full of whatever, okay? Whatever we want, all right, and are trying to bring forward, we need to, in our mind's eye, okay, bring it forward. Now, why, again, why does manifestation work? This is a mystery that will uh, will stump me and interest me for the rest of my life. You know, you know. But I, I you know, some people talk about it in a quantum level that we are um, like because of the observer effect or whatever. Our mind brings forth. You know, the world is infinite realities, and our mind or consciousness brings it into a certain track. Right? There is a reality where you're a billionaire you know, living on a beach, sipping margaritas, and that through your consciousness, you're bringing that reality. Um, it's called, what is that, trans-shifting or tra trans-surfing, reality trans-surfing. Who knows? I don't want to get into all that woo-woo yet. But I'll just say, visualization, man well, manifestation happens due to practice, diligent, repetitive, focused visualization. Now, before we can manifest something, we want to figure out what we want, okay? And that is, uh, well, it's a pretty simple question, but it really isn't. And this in itself, I think, is a journey of the ego that will take a lifetime. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, from the time of birth, you, we have all been programmed into thinking that we want things and we want a life that our probably deeper spiritual self or our soul or our higher self or whatever we want to call it uh, doesn't really want, okay? And that's the system we find ourselves in. Uh, that's just a fact, okay? So we've been bred from a young age, um, both collectively and universally as a, a species on planet Earth um, in the plant, global plantation and as well culturally in our countries and within our cities and towns and within our families. Okay, uh, many, many things. So most of like enlightenment and growth is actually a process of undoing, okay? It's stripping away a lot of the bullshit. Uh, I'm just gonna move this up here. I'm trying to get sunned. All right, hopefully that's better. Uh, down here. Oh, no, that's way worse. All right, that's the best I can do. All right, so undoing. Now. When you watch The Secret and you watch all these other dudes talking manifestation, guys who are making millions of dollars, uh, just telling you, you know, you just think of something, you know, pops up immediately. Uh, they're selling you a lie. <laughs> okay, I believe. Anyway, um, and they're not being totally honest with you about how manifestation works and the prerequisites you need to do to be able to manifest uh, routinely. And so um, one of those is visualization. And first that is cultivating a desire, right? You need to actually want something to be able to uh, bring it forward, obviously. Um, and so this is where it gets a little weird and I haven't totally figured all this out. But again, as I had just said, we've been programmed from a very young age, right? All of these false beliefs, false desires, like do I really want to drink Pepsi, right? Do I really want to um, eat McDonald's, okay? That's probably desire somewhere in your mind. Right? But that wasn't you. Okay? That wasn't your soul. Probably not. Okay? Um, as well, you know, let's just talk in terms of gender. Right? There's all of these ideas about what it is to be an ideal man. You know, especially now. Right? It's just totally insane. You know, in the past that was a warrior who fought and died for their state. You know, now it's, I mean, anything from what is a man to, you know, total wimp to oh no a man has to be an Andrew Tate where you're a professional boxer kickboxer and you know you run a ring of webcam girls you know trapped in your house to make tens of millions of dollars every month if you you know if you don't have 50 Lamborghinis and you know two billion followers you're not a real man you know to you know what total you know off-grid you know um, lives in the middle of nowhere 
person, right? Again, this is your choose your adventure, okay? But for me and my experience, I had to actually do a process of undoing um, all of that bullshit um, programming of like what I thought I wanted and what I thought I needed to be. And that, that could take a whole series of videos as well, right? But in a nutshell, this, this is also part of the spiritual work we all need to do, right? Is actually like write down and journal just like who you think people want you to be. <laughs> Seriously, it's really, really transformative. Just write down all the things like you think different people want you to be. Like, who does your boss want you to be? Who does your mom want you to be? Who does your spouse want you to be? Who, what do you think society wants you to be? You know, it's fascinating, right? Because then you'll see like, hey, do I want to be that? But unconsciously, we're conscious, we're constantly, because we are tribal creatures, we're, we actually always want to be part of the herd. Okay, so breaking that spell is like one of the hardest things I've ever done. That's why I moved to the middle of nowhere. And my ego went totally insane for the first eight months because I had nobody around. I was totally alone. Um, and I almost went insane. And then I had like spiritual breakthroughs that have changed my life for the better. Uh, but again, that's only when you confront this idea of all of the programming around who people, um, who you want to be. Right. And this will cause a little bit of uh, turbulence, right? Because many of us are living lives that aren't ours, that we don't want, uh, because subconsciously, mostly, uh, we thought that's what uh, we were supposed to do. Now, I don't want to say that we shouldn't have responsibilities and that life should be nothing but this you know, utopia where everything's great. No, I'm just saying in general, we uh, chew, make a lot of choices in our lives based off what people, um, what we think people want us to be. And it's not really what we want to be at a deeper level. It might be what our ego wants. So for example, I would never turn down a million dollars. If somebody says, here's a million dollars, that would be sweet, right? But A, do you think you could actually handle that million dollars? Most people who win the lottery go totally insane and ruin their lives and become junkies and spend it all and they're worse off, right? And then also, let's say not the lottery, let's say, um, you know, to build a career, to become a multimillionaire, you know, what would you have to do to do that? And the answer might be things that you don't really want to do or be, to become a person you don't really want to be. And so that's the real question is, you know, is that multi-million dollars worth selling out for who you really know you you are in a deeper level right these are things that i'm trying to talk about here right we have this programming that makes us think that we want to be you know in a mansion with tons of girls you know swimming in money you know what you know all of the things you see on tiktok and social media you know the six-pack abs all right your wife is like you know a supermodel you know your husband is you know andrew tate you know, whatever, okay? This is what we've been programmed into, all right? And we actually have to deprogram this from ourselves. And I'm gonna do a whole series, I think, on just deprogramming yourself. But in general, just to start thinking about it, right? So for me, I cared, not, I didn't really care about money. I never wanted to be in debt, but what I cared about is freedom and autonomy. So what does that mean? It means I always valued having as much free time while being able to uh, not be stressed by debt um, and having um, as much flexibility in my work and life as possible, right? So I would rather take 20,000 a year, okay? And live in a van somewhere here in this beautiful area, okay? That to me is more wealth than live, like working, making 100,000, living in a shitty condo, in debt, maxed out in a city, working a job that I hate around people I don't know and I probably hate as well and they probably hate me. Right? That was uh, my life for a while. <laughs> you know, I was making good money in the city. You know, I was spending tons of money. You know, I was living a very lavish lifestyle. The lifestyle they said, you know, men were supposed to be, right? Chasing women, you know, different people, every, you know, women every night, you know, going out partying all the time, you know, going to lavish parties, all this stuff, right? For me, you know, I thought that was what I wanted and then it was only after I got it and I realized that my life sucks and I'm, I hate my life, 
I hated everything about my life. That I realized, uh, no, all of that is bullshit. And then I uh, started my own business. I quit uh, my job and I left Toronto and I uh, totally I reinvented myself. But again, it started first from that process of undoing, realizing all the things that were programmed into me that I do not want to be, I do not want to do. And almost like you're in like a blank slate, right? And it's a very disorienting um, period of time. It's kind of like, you know, for us truthers, when you start to realize like, hey, you know, everything they told you is a lie, you know, these big mass events, you know, didn't really happen. And you're in that like period of like, oh my God, what's real, what's not like, I, you know. it's kind of the same thing because then you realize like, hey, I was living somebody else's life and it wasn't my life. And for the first time, you're starting to ask yourself, what do I really want? And it's not coming from an egoic place of emptiness that you're trying to fill. Okay, you're coming from a place of actually connectedness with spirit. And uh, again, this is a process. This is not a light switch. This is a process that happens over time, just to be clear. But we're starting to ask ourselves these types of questions. What is a well-lived life? Okay, and that comes from everything. From what is an ideal relationship? Okay, what is an ideal job? All right, what is, um, where do you want to live? How do you want to live? Right, um, all of these things, right? And that's going to be different for everybody. But we need to actually start desiring real human things because I don't think manifestation is healthy um, and I don't think it'll work if you're not grounded to that deeper level. Okay, we all might want $10 million, but what we really want you know, is a job and a life that is fulfilling, that every day you love waking up, right? That every day uh, you have something that pushes you, that motivates you, that, you know, inspires you. And that could literally just be med like meditating all day in a forest. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, or it could be, yeah, becoming a millionaire, having your own business and building an empire. Like, that's fine. Like, that's great. Just be like real. You know, but, you know, with who you are. And again, never sell out. <laughs> you know, this is part of the ethos you have to cultivate as well. Like, you ne ne don't sell out, okay? Um, what's most important to me is cultivating family and friendships, okay? And genuine, you know? Uh, yeah, so, again, a lot of intense topics. But this is all the work that we have to do, right? We're first healing our trauma, okay? Then we're starting to raise our dominant vibrational state. We're starting to become more aware. Then we're starting to realize, hey, all the things that have been programmed into me at a young age are mostly bullshit. And I'm living a life I didn't really want for people I don't really care about. <laughs> to, like, to impress people I don't really care about. In fact, I actually resent. Um, and then we have to start asking ourselves, what do we want? And we're going to go through an inventory of all of that, okay? It's going to be, what's your ideal job? Right, you, right now. What is your ideal job? And don't just say, like, uh, to make money and doing nothing. Because honestly, I've done that, and it'll ruin your life. <laughs> it's fun for a while, and you become a horrible person, right? So, you know, it has to be something fulfilling, you know? And it can be something that allows you to maybe work intensely for four months. Like I have a friend, uh, Jordan and Jess, lovely people, and they're nurses, okay? And they work six months, six, eight months a year, full tilt at the hospital, and then they stop and they get in a van and they travel all across the country going to beautiful places like this. That to them, right, is a form of freedom and that's amazing, right? So just start th thinking, visualizing, start wa watching videos of different people you know, who aren't total frauds and seeing how they live and seeing what parts you like and what parts you don't like, right? You know, start getting inspired, right? So in all areas of your life. So for friendship, you know, what kind of friends do you want? Like for me, when I lived in the city, I had all of these friends that uh, were cool and successful. But um, to be honest, I didn't really know much about them. And I wouldn't really trust them if things went south, right? And so for me... Friendship is like having somebody that I know I can trust with my life, you know, or all my savings. Say if I took everything I own, who could I give it to? And I know 100% would have my back, right? The number of people was very rare, right? For a lot of people with zero, 
right? Um, but we can cultivate these types of friendships. And so for friendship, that's it. For spouses, right? What is our ideal spouse? Now, again, a lot of people mix this up with somebody who's exactly like me. You know, my, uh, my wife, she's very different than me in a lot of ways. We compliment each other, though. And, you know, we both have the attitude of um, giving everything to each other, right? Like, we're fully in it. Like, I'm going to do the best I can. She's going to do the best we can. We're both loving, genuine, trying our best, trying to improve. And for me, that's perfect. And the dating scene is horrible out there. So, uh, like, most people are like garbage. <laughs> I guess that's a hard thing to say. But there's a lot of bad people out there. But I will say, again, back to manifestation. When you start to raise your vibration, people come to you that match that. And I've ex been experienced that. Like the last few months, I've met dozens of people just like, you know, going out or, you know, you know, just walking, you know, in the middle of nowhere that become friends that are, we share common interests and we're totally in alignment and we see the world very similar and different, but that's okay at the same time. And, you know, and it happens organically, but it's just, it's just coming. And again, this is because I've done the groundwork to get to this point. In the past, it was not the case. Um, yeah, so anyways, start thinking of what your ideal life is um, in all different areas of your life, right? So that is career, that is where you want to live, how you want to live, friends, you know, you know what interests you. I, I, I'm actually going to make a whole uh, program on this. And so if you guys are interested let me know if I should make it or not. Because I've been working on it over the course of years. Uh, so write in the comments below. If you think I should pull the triggers or put more time into making a full course on this. Uh, you know, let me know. Because uh, I've been thinking about it. But anyways. So now we're starting to ask these types of questions. Um, another good resource for this actually. Even though he blocked me. Jordan Peterson. Um, he has a future authoring program. And I think it, like back in the day it was like $8. And so you can literally do that. And he just asks you a series of questions of visualizing, like, who do you want to be? How, you know, it's really good. You know, so do that. It's like eight bucks. Um, you can also do it on your own. But yeah, you know, this is just a, a resource for you at your disposal there. Um, and then, so we're really trying to refine. Not so much that we're like, you know, a crystal clear picture. Like a lot of people who talk about manifestation they're like you need to be fully like see exactly you know where you want to be down to like the you know the the coloring on the couch in the house you know i i don't really think you need to do that you know but what do i know all i know is for me i uh i lived in toronto i was with somebody i really didn't like trapped in a housing situation i really didn't like in a job that was destroying me um with a lot of people and friends that weren't really my friends and my health was horrible and my um everything sucked my life was like a hell it was literally a hell and i manifested and practiced this um, i wanted to have my own business live close to nature have flexibility work remotely find my partner and build a family right and here we are right so it works and it works in big ways and in small ways. But again, first we have to figure out what we want. And first we have to figure out who we are not. Okay. So I think that's it for today um, in terms of visualization. Okay. And then next will be likely uh, the practice of deprogramming a bit more and practicing um, manifestation. Okay. Thanks, guys. Please like and subscribe. Um, again, our sponsor, Eric Mace, at uh, the link down below. If you guys are dealing with energetic blockages that um, are persistent and you want help, reach out to Eric. He is a practitioner of the Mace Energy Method. He does phenomenal work. Um, and if he doesn't help you, he'll give you your money back. Um, yeah. Reach out to him. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye.